before roller coasters are built, they need designers to, well, obviously design the ride. And there are a couple of the famous ones in the UK, such as John Wardley, for example. He was the one that designed Nemesis, and he's the one to say this famous quote. You really think your feet are going to crack against the rock? But in today's video, we aren't going to use a reliable person to create a roller coaster. We're going to be using AI, or better known as ChatGPT. <laughs> I thought to see if it could make my life easier and design this roller coaster. Now, I can't actually ask AI to build a roller coaster and it will pop up in my room. What I'm going to be doing is ask it the type of manufacturer, you know, the layout, what elements does it have, and all that stuff that makes up a whole roller coaster. And then I would go into Plan a Coaster, the amazing software, to make it come to life. Well, virtual life that is. And hey, if you are new around here and you like this type of content you see, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. So here we are in the ChatGPT software, and we're going to start out by asking what ride manufacturer. Boom. Hello, I am ChatGPT, and I'm here to take over the world. <laughs> oh, B and M, Intamin, and it's just giving me loads of them. This is not what I want. I thought ChatGPT was supposed to be smart. I am smart. Don't make me pull a bit. <laughs> ah, here we go. RMC. I don't know why it's writing me a whole essay. <laughs> and now we've got our manufacturer type. We're going to ask ChatGPT what age range this roller coaster is for. So, you know, is it for the little kids? I mean, I, I mean, I doubt that if it was an RMC. Is it family? Again, I doubt that. Or obviously teenager to not old fart year old. <laughs> <laughs> That's a summary. Um, they're not designed for young children and families, very young kids. ChatGPT is not doing doing well so far. I am. You just suck. <laughs> A target range of 10. And then we're going to ask it if it's going to be thrilling or not. Absolutely, it says. Absolutely with an exclamation mark. And now we're going to go to a tricky bit and ask it to design us the layout. So we're just going to walk through what it wants. So at the station and lift hill, start to begin with a very slightly elevated station give a sense of anticipation. You see, I like that. I bet John Wood didn't think of that. He probably did, didn't he? 200 feet and then add some trees. First drop, after cresting the lift hill, go into a steep 80 to 85 degree drop and then straight into an inversion, which is a zero G roll. Still, not roll, what am I on about? Followed by an airtime hill, twisting double up. I like that. An outer bank turn, a barrel roll, a small overbank turn, twisting airtime, double double inversion. Like two corkscrews, oh my goodness. Bonnie Hills and final overbank into the brake run. Okay, let's go into Planet Coaster and make this a reality. Again, it's not a reality, it's just a virtual reality. What am I on about? So here we are in Planet Coaster, and once again, I've got my lovely empty green land. Anyway, we're going to go into Coasters. RMC. I think there's two in the game, if I'm not mistaken. I can't even see it. Hello, am I blind? Yes, you are. And to think you called me stupid. <laughs> ah, here they are. Yeah, there's two here. Um, I'm going to go with this one because it's my favourite style. So we got the ride manufacturer. Now we're going to raise it a little, as it says. And then we need to make a drop between 80 to 85 degrees, so it's going to be a steep one. That looks absolutely stupid. And then we're going straight up into a zero G roll. And after this zero, <laughs> this massive zero G roll is into again sort of airtime hill. Oh. What the hell? 
And after this airtime hill is a twisting double up. Now we are going to try and make this as realistic as possible. Um, so I'm going to add my own kind of twist on it because we are literally just going straight and we are thousands of meters away from the station. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the twisting double up but as a turn. I, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen an RMC or a roller coaster that is do this, um, if I'm not mistaken. If there is, please prove me wrong in the comments. The next element now is an outer bank turn. It doesn't give me a specific way to outer bank. And then after this outer bank, it wants me to do a barrel roll. I had to look this one up because I don't really know what a barrel roll was, but it's basically uh, it's a heartline roll in um, roller coaster terminology. And then after this, it's a small outer bank. Then after this out smaller outer bank is a twist air time. And then this is kind of where it gets a little bit not realistic. I mean, I've never, I've personally never seen um, a double inversion as it's called. I've never seen one on an RMC. But what it means is it's basically say Colossus with its double corkscrews or Nemesis Inferno, if that counts with its interlocking corkscrew, how it goes into one inversion straight into another. I've def I've, I've not seen this on an, on an RMC, so... And then after these consecutive corkscrews, ChatGPT wants us to do some bunny hills and then into an outer bank into the brake run. So we're going to start building the brake run here. And I like how this terrain is naturally elevated for me. So what I'm going to do is, I know a lot of roller coasters do this, and I love it when they do. Have the brake run elevate up. Here we have it, um, the Chat GPT roller coaster. But fear not, this is not the end of the video or anything. I just wanted to show you that. Uh, but cut back to me um, when this whole roller coaster is nice and smooth. Smooth as I can make it for you guys. And here we go guys, here is the chat GPT roller coaster. This turned out better than I actually expected. Um, I was expecting it to be way worse. Um, but uh, it pulled through. There are a couple of things that I would obviously change about it. At, and especially Jordan Wardley would change about it. Such as the oddly profiled first drop. I mean it would most likely be an overbank drop. Um, and also how spacious it is, it takes up a lot of area, um, and I don't think that's what John Wardley would, uh, is looking for in a UK theme park. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about this ride. Do you think it was good? Do you think it was rubbish? Or do you think major theme parks in the UK should hire JetGPT? And if you did enjoy and you want to see more videos like this, subscribe down below. Enjoy the POV.